Hey, what's up, guys? So it's time for another eBay antique unboxing. Now, I purchased this with intention to restore it. Now, I've never restored anything like this before, so this is going to be quite a challenge. Um, this is total trash. Um, this is what you don't want to find in an antique. And uh, the seller's pictures were god-awful. Also, it was covered in layers and layers and layers of dust and filth. And, ugh, it's just really gnarly and disgusting. Why did I buy it? Well, it was really cheap, and I figured, why not try to learn how to restore certain things so in the future I can find other pieces like this, and actually, this is my practice piece, and then I can get them for much cheaper if I can restore them. All right, so what is it? I'm not 100% sure. I think it could be like a antique snuff box or a lady's pill box or, you know, like little trinket box. And actually, it's prettier in person than I thought it was in the seller's pictures. And you can see it's jewel encrusted and it's missing a lot of jewels. It's also missing its original freshwater cultured pearls. Um, you can see that. Look at the layers of dust on the rhinestones. Now, um, if you look on the side, this is why I really wanted it. It has something called, and I'm going to pronounce it wrong because I'm a New Yorker and I can't pronounce French. But it has something called Champlive. And you can see that enamel work, the turquoise enamel work going throughout it. Now let's turn it around. It may be missing some pearls. I hope it's not missing a lot. And uh, on the bottom, look at that. Look at that enamel work. That is just absolutely amazing. All right, so I have it opened up. And I think it might be made out of gilt brass and... Here's the inside. I'm trying to find a marking. Now, I do not know what country of origin this was made in, but I am guessing, and I'm probably not going to guess right. I'm going to look for markings, uh, hidden, you know, hidden markings. I'm guessing that it possibly could be Russian. And the Russians were known for this type of enamel work called Champlive. And uh, yeah, like even Fabergé, the house of Fabergé did things like this. And uh, you'll find a lot of Russian silver icons encrusted in this beautiful enamel going around it. Um, I have Russian silver icons with this same type of enameling going around it. If it's not Russian, it could be French. It could be Austrian. It could also be Czechoslovakian. So, um, yeah, I guess I won't know. Now, the problem is, okay, first off, it is filthy dirty. I don't know if you can see. Let's try to zoom in on this uh, filth. It is absolutely, look at the crust on the rhinestones. It is filthy. Even the enamel work is covered in layers of dust. And the problem is we're missing rhinestones. Now, um, we're also missing these little um, rice pearls. I believe they're rice pearls or seed pearls. And what I am going to do is I'm going to get Brasso. I am going to clean in and out of all the nooks and crannies I'm going to try to replace the rhinestones that are missing and the pearls. I have rhinestones that I ordered. Um, I ordered Austrian crystals and I ordered um, also one, uh, like glass ones on Amazon in all different sizes and colors to see if we can get anything to match and uh, fit in these little missing spots here. And I also ordered uh, freshwater cultured pearls um, on Amazon. And I'm going to try, hopefully. The problem is not knowing the size, the size to get. Um, so I'm going to try to like uh, replace the missing pearls, clean this up, um, replace the uh, little rhinestones that are probably paste. They're probably paste rhinestones. And let's see if we can make this look better. Let me get the brasso out. I'll start working on it with you guys live and uh, we'll see what we got here. All right. So I got a bunch of rhinestones from Amazon and eBay. These are the vintage ones. These are the uh, more contemporary. And so far, I've uh, actually found some matches. So um, you can't really tell, right? I didn't glue them in yet. But uh, this one is a replacement and this one is a replacement. Not bad. Not bad at all, actually. All right, so I'm going to clean this all up. Then I'm going to uh, glue in the uh, rhinestones and then the seed pearls. Hopefully, they're coming tomorrow night. And then I can uh, glue those uh, going around the box. All right, let's get the brasso out and let's get started. All right, so I'm going to attempt to show you how filthy this is. All right, let's zoom in. Okay, look at the layers of filth and dirt on this. 
including the rhinestones. Okay, that is really, really rank. And so, yeah, you can see layers upon layers upon layers of dirt on this box. Let's try to focus. There we go. And I got at least an hour and a half um, cut out for me getting in there with like teeny tiny little Q-tips and stuff to clean this. Yeah, the first thing you want to do is get a like a paintbrush, a soft, you know, soft bristle paintbrush. And I don't want water to touch this because any old metal that hits water, you may have a change in color, oxidation, and that whole nine yards. So you want to dust out all the dirt very carefully. And I'm going to go in there very, very gently amongst the pearls and dust all the debris, dirt, and filth out of this as much as I can. Um, let me get the edges. Now, when I do the brass, so I'm going to do a patch test. You definitely, definitely, definitely want to do a patch test because you never know if it's going to destroy the metal and give it a color you don't want. Now, I do like the patina, but this is just too filthy. Um, way too filthy. And it just looks, I mean, it just looks terrible. All right, so I'm getting in there. Now, I might lose a rhinestone or two because I don't know how well they held in, but... Okay, so I'm getting in there. Let me get the hinge. You don't want, like when you're cleaning it with Brasso, you definitely, definitely, definitely don't want to embed the dirt deeper in there. All right, so it looks a little cleaner. Now, there's a lot of nooks and crannies. Let me get my Q-tips out. So I got special Q-tips from Amazon. One side is ribbed like that, and then the other side comes to a very, very point, you know, like real pointy point, not like typical Q-tips. I have the Brasso, and it's not the liquid form. It's actually like a polish. It's like a creamy polish. And it's supposed to clean stainless steel, chrome, aluminum, pewter, bronze, brass, and copper. Um, we're going to do a patch test. So what I am going to do is I'm going to squirt some of it into a throwaway container. And so I can dip my Q-tip in there. And because uh, then it'll go all over the place. I'm going to choose the pointy part. So let me just dip it in. Get the Brasso on it and uh, go generous with it. We'll do the hinge area and we'll see what happens. That's like an inconspicuous spot. Whoa, look at the filth coming off of this. All right, so now I'm going to use my ribbed side. I'm being very gentle because I don't want to bump into these rhinestones because then you're screwed. You know what I mean? They'll break off, um, and I don't need to sit here uh, repairing more. Okay, this actually is amazing. Hold on. Just get this area right on the seam. And I'm seeing a huge, huge, huge change in this that I like. I actually like. All right, so let's check it out. Look at that compared to the rest. Here we go. Okay, Brasso is great. All right, so I'm going to continue to do this area. It's actually much shinier. I could see the shine. Look at that. I'm going to continue to do more areas, and I'll show you as I progress and go along. All right, so I'm glad I bought 800 Q-tips on Amazon. Okay, so I'm going to show you. Look, look how far we've gotten. Um, it's been probably 20 minutes, and I did here, here, and here, and a little bit over here. And look at the difference. Okay, Brasso is actually amazing. Look at that. And already it's starting to get a shine in certain areas. And you can see the difference. Okay, that was done. This was done. It's very hard, by the way, to get in between all the nooks and crannies. I don't want to knock out the pearls or the gemstones. But here's the spot that wasn't done. Look at that. And here's the spots that are uh, starting to come clean. And Brasso is absolutely amazing. Look at that. All right, I'm going to continue to go and I'll come back to you guys. All right, so, so far I got like half of it done on the top. I'm not going to go too much. I'm not going to clean too much because um, I want to leave a little patina on it. But um, as you can see, look how much cleaner that side is. Now I'm becoming more and more convinced that this may be Russian. Um, as I cleaned and I'm getting underneath um, all that filth, I'm noticing even more 
enamel work or uh, what's known as chomp leave. Um, it's uh, hidden under all the filth and the dirt. Look at that. And then if you look on this side, you don't see it, right? And then you look on this side and you see green enamel. Um, on this side, you don't see the green enamel. So this is actually becoming more spectacular than I ever thought. And again, I really feel it's Russian. Um, still looking for those marks. Um, I haven't been able to find them. But um, yeah, this might be a rare Russian box. Perhaps Fabergé. I don't know. I don't think it's the House of Fabergé. But nonetheless, yeah, this is probably Russian. All right. It's not finished, but it's finished. I'm just waiting on the pearls, but I thought I'd show you. Um, okay. Tell me this doesn't look, whoa, a hundred times better. All right. Let me pick it up. Oh my God. Look at that. Do you remember how filthy it was? Did you see all the like layers of dust on this? Look at this. All right, I'll hold it up to the light. Oh my goodness. This is like absolutely amazing. I cleaned everything, all the enamel. I cleaned the rhinestones. And look at the bottom. I even cleaned the bottom. Look at that. That is outrageous. Is that a Jewish star? I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. Um, aren't there a lot of Russian Jews? I think there are a lot of... I'm, I'm not being racist or anything. Is it bad to say Jew? I don't even know in today's day and age. <laughs> like you say one thing and somebody thinks that you're racist. I don't know. Are Jews allowed to be called Jews? But whatever. I think it's a Jewish, a Russian Jewish box um, that was made in Russia. And uh, let me show you actually. Wow, look at this. I am just like tickled pink by this. Let me show you what the inside looks like. I also cleaned the inside out. Look how shiny that got, right? I mean, I didn't clean it completely 110%. But um, I cleaned it as much as I could um, without, like, losing patina. Now, I cannot find markings anywhere um, at all. Like, the markings are completely, like, I don't know. I don't know if it's hidden. But uh, there are no markings whatsoever unless I'm missing something somewhere. But look at that shine. Um, does anybody know anything about this? If you know more about this, please tell me in the comments below. Because I am, like, really, really, really... Um, amazed by the beauty of this i mean look at this work this workmanship why would anybody go through all this amount of trouble just for a small box now i'm thinking that maybe this was what's known as a patch box and ladies used to um have stick on moles i shit you not they used to have little stick on moles and they used to stick moles on their faces and they used to have things called patch boxes so this might even be a patch box but there you go. So I'm waiting on the pearls. Once the pearls come in, um, the whole thing's going to be encrusted in pearls as well. And uh, yeah, there we go. All right, guys. Thanks uh, for watching another one of my antique restorations. I had a lot of fun. And I will see you guys all soon. So long.